You are listening to the Weight Loss and Wellness for Real podcast with Heather Heinen, licensed professional therapist, mental health. Welcome to Weight Loss and Wellness for Real, the podcast where people like you get the practical solutions and support you need to permanently lose the physical and mental weight so you can feel better and live the life you want in the body and mind you want. If you're looking to overcome your stress eating, overeating, binging behaviors, and move to a place of freedom with food and your body, you're in the right place. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I got from some listeners. This is going to be all about how to avoid the junk food in the break room um, and the best snacks to help satiate and help with weight loss or weight maintenance. And then I'm also going to discuss the idea of some movement snacks right at the end. So take a listen. There should be at least one very practical, very doable strategy that you can incorporate into your daily life um, that's really going to help get you into a more healthy place with mind and body. So let's talk first about the break room, junk food, temptation station, as I like to call it. I, when I think about this or when I got asked this question, I immediately flash back to about 20 years ago, um, which I can't even believe it was 20 years ago, but I worked as a school counselor at an elementary school for about five years. That was at the beginning of my mental health therapy career, counseling career. And at that school, like most schools and places of work, there was a lounge or a break room. And in that break room, there was always, and I mean always, sweets, treats, donuts, candy, You know, I spent that first year at that job with access to all those tempting foods while working in a very stressful environment. So it really was the perfect storm, um, which I'm sure most of you are in as well. Highly stressful job. And right now in 2020, just high stress all around us, even if our job isn't super stressful, 2020 itself is just stressful. So we're highly stressed with very easy access to all kinds of fatty, sugary foods, Um, that really can make the stress go away for a moment. And it is so easy to stop into the lounge or break room, grab a bite and do, you know, for me, and then do the next thing that needed to be done. It was like this little break, you know, within the hour where I could get relief for just a moment to go walk in, you know, stress, stress, stress that job, but I can go to the lounge and I can grab a bite or, you know, a mini chocolate bar or something. And for those little tiny moments, there was relief in that and stress was gone. And so really that would um, create this habit of going back in there to find that relief again. You know, so two hours later, I'd go back through the break room to get to the copy machine, something like that. So then I'd grab a handful of M&Ms, have to walk through the break room to get to the office to talk with the principal, grab another handful Or, you know, even just peruse with my eyes the donut or baked goods that I'm going to grab later after work. And it was really interesting because at first I wasn't even aware I was doing this. Um, I had never really been in an environment with super easy access like that to all those things. So I really, I I really didn't even recognize what was going on. Um, But then the scale started moving. So I started to pay attention a bit more and was surprised how often I mindlessly was grabbing a handful of crap food. And it really was all adding up. And here's another little note. And some of you are not going to like me when I say this, but I always, you know, speaking the truth is really important to me. I hate to say it, but reality is those little things really do add up. Usually in the morning or the in the moment, like little grabs of bites here and there, little tastes, you know, we kind of tell ourselves that ah, it's so little, it doesn't matter. The truth is, though, they do count and they really do stall weight loss progress and they really can put weight on all those little things. I call that kind of thing, like that kind of eating behind the back eating. 
And that's kind of where you grab a little something here and a little something there, or you know, you're tempted in the moment and quickly eat it and almost kind of forget you did it. And if I were to ask you the following day what you ate yesterday, you might name your meals, but you wouldn't tell me about all those little bites, tastes, and temptations you gave into because you know you kind of ate it behind your own back. You weren't even very mindful of it. So, so we end up kind of kind of forgetting those things if we're not paying attention. You know, we do it, but it doesn't really register. And this is the kind of eating that if it just gets cleaned up, just those little things, many people start dropping weight without doing anything else. So behind the back eating um, happens often in the break room and especially over the holidays, which we're in right now, as there's just so much more, you know, so many more tempting foods all around us. I think another issue with that kind of eating, the behind our back eating, it makes us feel really crappy mentally, emotionally, and even physically. So foods that we typically eat behind our backs or mindlessly eat to gain that tiny little bit of relief, foods like that really do drain our energy physically and can make us tired. And then this sets us up for a a cycle of wanting more food that is not good for us. It turns into a perpetual cycle of eating more to try to feel better, to try to find relief uh, momentarily from the crappy way you're feeling due to eating the break room foods or the crappy foods. So it really does turn into this downward spiral of where you know we keep trying to eat to feel better keep trying to eat to find relief due to feeling pretty crappy because the food that we're eating okay so we've established that it's difficult to say no to tempting foods all around us especially if work is stressful or we're feeling stress Um, we've also established that there are pretty significant consequences to participating in eating behind our back so what can we do about it? Here are a few just very practical behavioral ideas, and then I'm going to give you a couple of practical thought work strategies on this particular issue. So here's number one, and this really is like just common sense. Avoid the break room at all costs. So if it is possible, find another place within the work environment that you can go to take a break. And although I get it's not always possible, the truth is is that the more you can avoid being around foods you're tempted by, but don't fit your goals, the easiest thing to do is to remove yourself from the environment. This gets even into the initial advice I often give to clients um, who have a really hard time you know, emotionally using food. If there is food in their environment, they're feeling stressed or not so good, Um, because they eat to kind of gain relief and find emotional freedom for the moment. Uh, If if they are surrounded by tempting foods like that, it's very difficult for them to say no to it. Um, They're, they, these, you know, if you're an emotional eater at all, you'll understand this. It's like you are compelled to eat the the food. So initially we really do, um, they're instructed to clean out their home environment of all tempting foods. They're still allowed to have these foods, But the idea of cleaning out the environment or not going into the break room is just to make it more difficult to access. So if they want the food, they can actually, they have to decide they want it and they have to decide to get in the car and go get it. This environmental setup, you know, creates that moment of space between the thought, I want it and putting it into your mouth. And this space often creates time for the urge to pass and we end up not going to get the thing. Um, not eating the thing. Not always, um, but definitely more often, we will not eat the thing if we create this little bit of space. And by the way, if you have a family and, and can't clean up your environment completely, there are ways to do this with a family and keep the foods in the kitchen. Um, but those are some some different strategies that I go into with with clients. But It's not like you have to do this for every single person. It's not like you have to clean out your whole kitchen and then the rest of your family doesn't get what they want. There are ways to set boundaries for yourself um, when you're living with a family with those foods. But anyway, okay, back to the work environment. So if possible, avoid the room with all the temptations. You just simply won't be tempted then. Okay, but reality check. If you cannot avoid the break room, the next strategy to employ is to simply chew gum. This is such a simple one, but it really can be super helpful. It has worked for lots of clients. It works for me. So be chewing gum. Chew gum before you head in there. Having gum in your mouth again creates that momentary space 
where you can't just reach and grab a donut and put it in your mouth mindlessly. The gum creates the space where in order to put something in your mouth, you actually will have to take a moment to get rid of the gum. And often this, this one little moment creates that space for a different decision to be made. So again, we're just really trying to get out of the mindless eating. We're trying to create space where we can make an informed decision. It doesn't mean we're not gonna eat the thing, but it does mean that we give ourselves a shot, at least, at not eating the thing. Okay, so those are some real simple behavioral strategies you can employ. Here's a couple thought work strategies. So the beginning of the day, creating a guideline with yourself Like, um, if I decide I want to eat something in the break room, I will first drink a glass of water or a cup of tea. If I still want something after that, I can have it. So creating that guideline, writing it down, um, reading it over and over, often what happens is that time it takes to drink the water or tea, again, creates some space in your mind, and you're going to find it's easier to just not eat the tempting food. I I really do prefer these guidelines to be written out. The writing of it does something in our brain that is a bit different than just telling ourselves something like it in our head. So write out your guideline and put it where you will see it often. Again, you've heard me talk often about sticky notes. You know, put it on the dash of your car, put it, um, it, you know, in your office, on the side of your computer, wherever you're going to have to read through it often, where you're going to see it. Really setting up that guideline, that intention at the beginning of your day, you will see really does shift how you start to behave throughout your day. Okay, second thought work strategy. Write out exactly how you want to navigate the break room environment. So if the break room temptation station is an issue for you, writing out exactly how you want to navigate it can be extremely helpful to curb behavior. So it could be something like this. I want to be able to go to the break room without eating the food that is in there as I know when I eat that food, I move further from my weight loss goal or I know when I eat these foods, I feel terrible after eating them later on and it sets me up to want to eat more things like that. I want to feel proud of myself and my choices. So the idea is to set your brain up for exactly how you want the scenario of the break room and all its food to go down for you. It's almost also like when you write it, it creates this visualization process. And most of us understand how visualizing things really can help us curb our our behavior. So you want to set your brain up for exactly how you want the scenario of the break room to go down. So write it out and read through out loud your perfect scenario. This kind of, um, this type of thought work helps set your brain up to actually follow through on the way you truly want to behave in a tempting moment. It sets you up to be able to make a different decision in the moment. Will you always do it if you do this piece of thought work? No, you won't always. Sometimes you will just say, screw it and eat it anyway. But what this type of thought work does is really creates, um, sets your brain up to be able to follow through, like more likely follow through on the behaviors that you're choosing. You'll just find it's easier to say no more often. You won't always say no, but you will say no more often. Okay, so that gives you some ideas for approaching the behind the back eating and the break room temptation station. So next question was about the best snacks to satiate and help with weight loss. And all I have to say here is one word. Protein, protein, protein. If you choose a snack high in protein, you are going to find you are satiated longer, your cravings are going to lessen, and weight loss, weight maintenance becomes so much easier. So check out snacks like um, healthy jerky sticks, meat bars, uh, pre-made chicken breast or bison or beef patty, hard-boiled eggs, leftover salmon, People don't think of meat as snacks, but I am telling you, it literally will change your food life. There are so many less cravings. You feel fuller longer. You're going to have energy. Um, It is really, truly worth being being that weird one at at break time, eating a chunk of salmon or chicken. It really is worth it. Um, Make sure you check your ingredients if you decide to use jerky. Lots and lots of unhealthy brands out there, jerky brands, meat brands, um, meat bar brands, with lots of added sugar and chemicals. Um, 
do not think that if you just pick up some random piece of jerky and eat it for a snack that you're doing your body a favor. You really, really need to read the ingredients list. Lots of jerky out there with so many, um, so much sugar in it. And um, basically, you're just going to undo everything that you think you're doing. So really read read your labels. Um, brands I like are um, like the Epic brand. Paleo Valley is pretty good. Um, and Vermont Smoke and Cure uh, jerky sticks are really good. Um, and and zero, zero to two grams of sugar in each portion. So that's really good. You really want to look for zero grams of sugar. Um, that would be your best bet. Okay, third thing I want to put into this practical tactics episode is the idea of movement snacks. And the idea here is that you use small movement or small moments of time between, you know, your really busy day and your everyday life to do different movements to help you feel better, lose weight, maintain weight without having to set aside an hour or two for a typical workout. Um, Many of you do not even have time for that, uh, but there is a way to incorporate movement throughout your day to really get a decent workout in and gain the benefits of what a typical, what we think of as a typical workout would give you. So movement snacks are little things you can do multiple times a day without changing into workout gear or needing workout equipment and um, use these movements to just wake up your body and brain a little bit. A protocol might be something like, Every 20 to 50 minutes, you have an alarm go off, you know, so every hour you set your alarm for every 20 to 50 minutes to go off and it signals you to stand and maybe do, I don't know, something like 10 air squats or jumping jacks or maybe a few push-ups. And, you know, you could include other micro movements too, like going into different yoga poses or reaching to touch your toes. But if you incorporate these small movement snacks every hour, it really is surprising how much it adds up. So just say you do 10 air squats every hour during an eight hour period of work, you're gonna have done 80 air squats that day. So it's really an easy way to get in some serious movement when you don't have time for that hour walk or that 45 minute workout. So it's just something really cool that you can think about including that has huge, huge, huge benefits without a ton of effort. So those are the things we're kind of looking for. Okay, so you have some ideas to cut down on the break room temptation station, and you have two practical strategies to help with weight loss, cravings, maintaining weight, creating more energy for yourself, and just to feel better. Those two things were eat pure protein for snacks and incorporate movement snacks throughout your day. So give one or two a go and see how much better you start to feel. And here's a really good takeaway, Um, you know, just something to kind of hopefully will set in your mind as you go away from listening to this. Your body, our bodies are always changing. Um, They are either improving or they're declining. And it takes, our bodies take cues from things we eat, we drink, even the way we sit, the environment around us, and the thoughts we think. And based on all those things, the body adapts. And it adapts by either improving or declining in health. So we have a tremendous amount of control on the way our body looks, feels, moves. And if you're not happy with it, it is time to change things up. The practical strategies we talked about can have a tremendous impact on your your overall health and function if you put it into daily practice. So remember, consistency trumps intensity. So if you found anything useful from this episode, uh, would you please take the time to subscribe to this podcast and also give a five-star review if you feel it's warranted. When you subscribe, you will be sure to get the newest episode once they're released. And all of this helps me keep the episodes rolling out and continuing to share information like this from this platform. If you've already subscribed, thanks so much for supporting this podcast. Also, you can head over to my social media for more resources. You can find me on Instagram at Heinen Counseling and Coaching. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. And once you're there, feel free to DM me or comment or post any questions you may have about all things weight loss, wellness, optimizing health, nutrition, thought work, etc. 
Um, I also have a recipes only page on Instagram at Peak Proteins Recipes, and Peak is spelled P E A K. It's where you'll find all my high protein recipes and healthier versions of some um, sweet foods that normally people enjoy. And if you keep listening right now, you're going to get some more information on how my clients take a deeper dive on these topics with me through online programs and coaching. It's where you get the actual structured lessons, worksheets, journal prompts, support and coaching behind all the stuff I'm putting out there right now, um, all with the intent to help you lose your weight for good, for life, improve your health, and live the life you've been dreaming about in the body you've been dreaming about. I hope you are finding something useful from these episodes and this podcast. And if so, please share it with someone else in your life you feel it could benefit. This podcast is also now monetized. So if you really feel you are getting a lot from it and want to help keep it going, please go to the episode show notes. You can just scroll down from wherever you're listening. You'll see a description of the episode and then you will see it says support this podcast and then there's a link you can click on. You can click on that link and that's where you can support the podcast. Even the smallest donation like 99 cents helps to keep me producing the podcast. And to those of you who have donated, I really, really appreciate the support. I really do appreciate all of you listening and sharing the space with me. Again, just very thankful for all of you. Did you know you can find a lot more help from me on my website? Go to heatherheinen.com. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. And get in touch with questions on all things I offer like online courses for overeating, weight loss, goal attainment, and also my coaching and counseling services. 